You are testing an application. You found a password reset functionality. You clicked on it to get a password reset link, but you didn't use it. Instead, you logged in with the same password in that application and changed your email to something else. So, the password reset link that you got previously shouldn't be working right. But in this case, because of the broken authentication, the application doesn't check it and the reset link is still working and it changes the password for the user. This is an actual vulnerability and you can check it out in this HackerOne report. I can give the link in the description. The another scenario is, let's say you're logged in into an application and you got your cookies in it, right? You copied that cookie, you logged out from the account and you also cleared all the cookie related to that application in your browser. Now once you log in again, you should get a fresh cookie that should be working and the previous cookie should be working, right? But the cookie that you copied, you can paste it in your browser and you are logged in again in your session. So that old cookie is still working. This is also an example of a broken authentication or you can call it improper authentication where the application is not checking or validating session cookies after a user logs out. So if someone has access to the session cookie, the old session cookies, he or she can get unauthorized access to the user's account. These two examples were actually low-level bugs. We will dive more into critical bugs as you watch this video. We are also going to look at how broken authentication arises in REST APIs. Basically, whether it is REST API or not, it is similar. It's just that the application is using API, but the concept and logic remains the same. So I'm going to discuss all the multiple scenarios that are present in the OS API security top 10 of the broken authentication category. So the first one is credential stuffing. This happens when the attacker uses brute force with list of valid usernames and passwords. And since there is no rate limit, an attacker can guess what are the valid usernames and password. Due to credential stuffing, there has been a lot of breaches like this. If the API is vulnerable, Another thing you can do is perform a brute force attack on the same user account which doesn't have any capture or account logout mechanism. What is account logout mechanism? An account logout mechanism protects user accounts by temporarily locking them after several wrong password attempts. This means if someone tries to guess your password too many times, they won't be able to keep trying for a while because the account will be locked. Another case is sending sensitive authentication details such as auth tokens or session tokens and passwords in the URL. For example, have a look at this report. It says that the URL is transporting session token in the URL itself. If you look at the screenshot, you can see that the identifier is over here. So an attacker can capture this session token using some capturing tools like Wireshark that can capture data sent over a network. This can happen if the application is using HTTP instead of HTTPS. You can see in the screenshot it is using HTTP 1.1 version which is vulnerable because it sends the request data in plain text format. So it is clearly visible to attackers. Another interesting scenario that you can look for while testing is if there is email change functionality or changing the current password functionality. While doing that, the application should be asking you to type your current password, right? But if the application is not asking for password confirmation while performing these operations, then it's vulnerable. Next one is the web application doesn't validate the authenticity of tokens. What do I mean by that? So basically, the application uses JSON web tokens for authentication, but doesn't verify the token's signature. So to test this in a real web application, you have to create two accounts, an account A and another account B. 
first you have to log in with account A and you will get your JWT token. Copy it and paste it in some text editor, let's say Notepad. Now log out and log in with another account B. And again you will get your new JWT token. Okay, so now you have tokens for both account A and B. Now you can do is you can go to some website like jwt.io to decode the token. When you decode the token, you will end up with three parts, header, payload, and signature. I've talked about this and I have explained everything in these videos. I'll provide the links. You can check them out. Okay, so once you decoded it, you're gonna see user ID which is the identifier of a particular user. Now you can change the user ID to some other ID, let's say to your account B. Now again, encode it without generating a valid signature. In some cases, you can even remove the signature part from the JWT token. I have also talked about this in this video as well. Okay, so now when you're in account B, you have the credentials of your account A in JSON Web Token. Now you can use a tool like Burp Suite to send the request to the application with the tampered JWT token. And if you're logged into other users' account, then it is confirmed that the application is not validating signature. Now, if you have no idea about how tokens work and what signature is, this might be not making any sense to you, but this is a simple thing. A signature is unique and the application validate the signature for each JWT token. So even if you tamper the token, decode it and encode it and send it to the application, the application won't allow it in normal case scenarios. But because of the broken authentication, it doesn't check it and allows it. Now, in some cases, you can also brute force valid JWT tokens. I have talked about this as well in this video. Let's talk about a recent breach that happened at Twilio. Twilio is a service that helps developers add communication features like calling, texting, and video to their applications or apps. So they can use these APIs to integrate those features in their application. But it was found that there was an unauthenticated API endpoint that allows anyone to access the API without needing authentication or a password. So the attacker exploited the unauthenticated API endpoint by feeding it a large list of phone numbers to identify which numbers were associated with the accounts. They queried the endpoint without needing authentication and they received responses which revealed account ID numbers, account status, device counts, and device log status even. This is, again, another example of broken authentication. Okay, I don't want to make this video more long. If you want to suggest some topics in the broken authentication category itself, you want me to go deep in explanation, you can write your comments down. I'll check them out. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.